the ancient alchemists sought to transform lead into gold, searching for various substances. Did they know that there was a much more powerful force than the gold hidden inside the atoms? In comparison with this force, although the gold is valuable, it is no more than a simple metal. Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about how, thanks to the hidden force in the atoms, the most powerful lethal weapon has emerged and evolved than anything that humanity has ever conceived. Guys, here's the Wikipedia Plus channel. So let's get started. The first nuclear bomb. In 1938, German physicists Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann were trying to discover heavier elements than uranium, called transuranic elements, bombarding uranium with neutrons. The conclusion that researchers came to with this experiment was that by bombarding uranium with neutrons, the nucleus of the uranium atom would break and divide into lighter elements. Thus, the process of nuclear fission was discovered, which releases a large amount of energy. And then, the so-called Uranium Project, the German Nuclear Weapons Development Program, was initiated. Almost at the same time, in the United States, the so-called Uranium Committee began its activities, evolving three years later to the famous Manhattan Project. The team that worked on the development of the first nuclear bomb included renowned names such as Niels Bohr, Enrico Femi, Richard Feynman and John von Neumann, among others, and of course, not Killian Murphy, but Robert Oppenheimer, who is known to everyone today. As a result of this development, the first nuclear test in the world, known as the Trinity Experience, was carried out, detonating the plutonium bomb gadget. On July 16, 1945, a 12-meter high fire mushroom cloud rose above the test field of Alamo Gordo, and its light could be seen 290 kilometers away from the point of explosion. Scientists could not predict what would happen when they detonated the first plutonium bomb in the world. Not even the power of the explosion was correctly estimated. Oppenheimer estimated the explosion to be 300 tons of TNT, but the value recorded by the instruments was 21 kilotons equivalent to TNT. With that explosion, the nearby mountains were illuminated as if it were day. At the site of the explosion, a crater of 80 meters in diameter was formed and at a radius of 300 meters, the heat was so intense that the sand melted, forming a radioactive glass called Trinita. Among the people who watched the flames spread across the sky, some danced and laughed, while others were paralyzed by shock. The world will never be the same again, said Oppenheimer. And he was right. The first underwater explosion at the end of the Second World War in the United States, it was the only country to have nuclear weapons, already having both the plutonium bomb and the simplest, but less effective, uranium bomb. In 1946, the first series of continuous nuclear tests in the world was carried out, under the codename Operation Crossroads. In the first test, called ABO, under the eyes of journalists from several countries, the American army launched the plutonium bomb, Gilda, on a group of ships. This bomb had a power of 23 kilotons and was decorated with a portrait of the Hollywood star Rita Hayworth. Because of this beautiful bomb, two ships sank immediately, followed by three more. The second test of Operation Crossroads was the Becker test. This was the first underwater test in the world, with a plutonium bomb detonated at a depth of 27 meters. The appearance of this explosion was very different from everything people had ever seen. Instead of a cloud of fire mushrooms, a fireball and steam went up in the air, turning into a cloud that looked like a cauliflower made of water sprinkles. It was an impressive show. The first mass-produced nuclear bomb In the first nuclear tests, the United States used a bomb called Mark III, which was practically assembled manually. Each piece was assembled manually under rigorously controlled conditions, and only highly qualified specialists worked on this assembly. Therefore, the development of a mass-produced bomb became the next stage of evolution, resulting in the Mark IV. This bomb was easy to manufacture and also easy to use in combat. 
The Mark IV was implemented in 1949, and the United States produced a total of about 550 nuclear bombs, with powers ranging from 1 to 31 kilotons. The first nuclear test of the Soviet Union The United States believed that it could maintain its homogeneity as the only nuclear power for some time, but the Soviet Union had already established a network of nuclear spies. During the Manhattan Project, obtaining valuable information on nuclear tests, the Soviet Union managed to surprise the United States a lot. For years after the Trinity test, on August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union detonated its first nuclear bomb in the country, RDS-1, with a power of 20 kilotons. Although the Soviet Union still did not have means of transport, this event initiated the armament race and led to the development of new types of nuclear weapons. Operation Greenhouse The continuous goal in the evolution of nuclear weapons was to maximize the power of destruction as the mass of the bomb and the amount of fissile material was reduced. Thus, the United States began testing new bombs and Operation Greenhouse represented an important step in this process. During this operation, four tests were carried out at the Wenitak Atoll in the Pacific in 1951. On May 8, the George bomb test was carried out, with a nuclear power of 225 kilotons that became a prototype for the thermonuclear weapon that would appear a year later. This bomb used small amounts of tritium and deuterium, which served as a powerful source of fast neutrons for uranium fission, but did not trigger a nuclear fusion mechanism. Therefore, this test is considered the first nuclear explosion of an improved nuclear bomb. The item test was the first to use a detonation in multiple stages. The explosion power was only 45.5 kilotons, but it was twice the power of a single-stage uranium bomb. The first bomb of the United Kingdom The United Kingdom contributed significantly to the development of the Manhattan Project, but only obtained its own atomic bomb on December 3, 1952, during Operation Hurricane. With this, the United Kingdom became the third country to have nuclear weapons. This atomic bomb, with a power of 25 kilotons, was detonated on the Mount Bello Islands, west of Australia. The first thermonuclear bomb After establishing the base with Operation Greenhouse, the United States returned to the UNTAC atoll on November 1, 1952, to test a true monstrous bomb. This monster was the first thermonuclear bomb, the Ivy Mike. In fact, it was not yet a bomb as we imagine, but an experimental device that weighed almost 74 tons and had a special cryogenic system. After the detonation of this huge bomb, the Eluge Lab Island disappeared without leaving traces, literally evaporating. Ivy Mike had a power of 10 megatons, exceeding many limits of previous nuclear bombs. This success was due to a new structure that complemented the fission process with the nuclear fusion process. For comparison during the same, Operation Ivy, the United States detonated the King Bomb, which was the most powerful of a single stage at the time, but its nuclear power was only 500 kilotons, 1 20th the power of Ivy Mike. Thermonuclear weapons Thus, thermonuclear weapons became a pattern in the design of bombs. In 1953, the Soviet Union detonated its first thermonuclear bomb, the RDS-6, which was a single-stage bomb with a power of only 400 kilotons. As the theoretical performance of such bombs was less than one megaton, something different was necessary. Then, on March 1, 1954, the United States carried out the Castrol Bravo test at the Atoll de Bikini, detonating a two-stage thermonuclear bomb. Instead of liquid tritium and deuterium, this bomb used solid lithium deuterium. Its power surprised everyone who was around. The nuclear performance was 15 megatons, 2.5 times stronger than previously calculated. This was the test with the most powerful explosion in the history of the United States. However, the world's most powerful nuclear explosion was the Tessa bomb, launched by the Soviet Union in 1961. This monstrous thermonuclear bomb had a performance of 58.6 megatons, and the explosion flash was observed 1,000 kilometers from the detonation point. The first bomb in space 
Compared to the Tessar bomb, the small Starfish Prime, with only 1.44 megatons, was not so impressive. However, this bomb was the first to be detonated at 400 km altitude, that is, out of the Earth's atmosphere, marking a new stage in evolution. This test was carried out by the United States in 1961, and it had such powerful effects that 1,500 km from the explosion point, electronic devices and lighting posts failed, and a third of the satellites in low orbit were inoperative. Don't you think it would be better not to carry out more tests of this type? Otherwise, we can miss out on many interesting things that we have prepared for you, and even YouTube may disappear. If you liked today's video, leave a like and share it on social networks. So see you next time. Bye.